morning, Raymond. Aqua. Good morning, Malik. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I miss that Raymond's good morning. Can somebody take this flag from this man's chest? If in the first place is a muffler. That then is please take it. And and you will not stop me from ex there's a country of freedom of expression. I, I'm sure you are referring to the red Liverpool muffler I'm wearing right now. The Can very red it? one. Yes, no, let, we can, let's go. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning to every Liverpool fan out there. Uh, fan paraphernalia is a very good thing. It shows loyalty. The economic times is record. Oh, you people won't tell me how your weekend was. Yeah, we know it was fine. <laughs> 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 oh, but I felt sad when the British guy was beaten by the guy with uh, the one pack. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Raymond is expressing hope that <laughs> Anthony Joshua six pack yes. is not the solution of the world. Yes, not at all. Not to anything in this world. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the front pages. Now the economic times is reporting this morning. BOG closes down 39 micro credit companies and CD depreciation slows. The banks are giving more loans to the private sector. That story is also on the front page of the Gold Street Business. Bank of Ghana revokes licenses of 386 microfinance companies. Lending rates falling again as Eurobond issuance relieve pressure on domestic financing and $10.35 billion to be raised on domestic market in next three months. That's government cutting debts issuance targeted for June. The Daily Guide is reporting this morning. Nigeria deports for Ghanaians <laughs> and shake up a GRA. Can on more heads customs. I never knew that Nigeria... <laughs> <laughs> Ghana must go. <laughs> they, are, they are four. Really? Yes, four. <laughs> <laughs> the Chronicle newspaper has fallen tree kills five after heavy downpour. Otunfo lottery game report presented to Asante Asante Hene. Mining in Etiwa forest will not affect wildlife. That's the president saying. Brawl over special compensation pay. Obwasi mines on time bomb. Um, as Ghana uh, Mines Workers Union chief labor officer. Some management staff ex as, uh, what, accuse ex-workers of forging their signatures to dupe them. Now, the Herald is reporting this morning, John Boyd, the Westbys, gross ignorance of extant cubic bauxite deal, and trade minister is not getting churches and not factories. There's one also about the IGP's deputy, a senior police officer in naked disrespect towards the IGP. And that's on the front page of the Herald. The Daily says my newspaper has Justice Ajaku, a patriot, the shake-up, a GRA also here. No more North versus South. That's government is fighting to bridge the poverty gap, says Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, Vice President. The Ghanaian Observer is reporting this morning a Kufuado okays at Tiwa bauxite mining and uh, says wild livestock not endangered. And there's also one about the Kadik Crown's new chief as Osabema Asayuki is sworn in by the Ochihne. Court stops NDC's limited voter registration demo and a coup for this police policies rather improving our lives. The upper West chiefs are the one making this claim. The new crusading guy newspaper has that Kade chief swearing allegiance to uh, the Ochehene, but that's on the front page of the chronicle. The, the crusading guy newspaper, Mark Menu has done nothing wrong. Ploy to rope GPHA board chair in 1.5 billion dollar concession deal backfires. Ghanaian American woman fights lawyer over lawyers over her property Kumasi court to hear case on June 4th. The Ghanaian Times is reporting this morning that a baby and four others have died in Takrade flats and we know that those uh, five belong to a single family. Now there's also one about a man being detained in whole hospital for five months for non-payment of bills and the shake-up it's also on the front page of the Ghana. That's what it's on the front page of the independent newspaper. Government to privatize management of Ayalulu. Liverpool beating Tottenham is on the front page as well. That makes Daniel extremely excited this morning. It's very compelling news. It's now, very compelling news. The, yes, fin <laughs> the finder is reporting this morning that 1.2 million depositors and some 1 billion have been rescued in that particular 386 microfinance credit closure. There's also one about to Tobacco smoking, killing 75 men in Ghana. This is every seven days, according to the finder. There's a scary photo on the front page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. It's a tanker crossing the motorway. Alongside this photograph is a headline, Motorway Loses Shine. Slums illegal U-turns reduce road to street. But also on the front page of the Daily Graphic, insolvent microfinance companies who face court institute measures against organized crime conflict that's a norwegian prime minister back page of the daily graphic newspaper special competition tier two round of 16 
Unistar make hearts pay the penalty. Mediama Kotoko reach quarter finals. Those are the stories on the, the back page of the Daily Graphic. Let's begin with the story of the microfinance sector and what the Bank of Ghana is doing in there. So last Friday we heard that some 386 microfinance and microcredit companies um, actually have been, their licenses have been revoked. And by the revocation of their license, they can no longer operate. In fairness, some of them were not operating. And this is 70% of all the 544 licensed microfinance and microcredit institutions. Now, if you break it down, we're talking about 168 microfinance and microfinance and micro microcredit credit institutions being solvent in this particular case. And again, 137 of them are in the microfinance regime okay. and also 31 within the microcredit. And now we know that 192 are insolvent, but they were operating. So out of the 386, 192, they were insolvent but operating. But the 155, they ceased operation a long time ago because their insolvency and other problems forced them to stop operating. Mm -hmm. So indeed, the if there is any that have been shut down, to be fair, it's the 192 in this particular case. Now, the Bank of Ghana is also saying that government made, mindful of what it was going to do, arrangement for some 900 million Ghana cities to be used to make sure that we cater for the depositors and the people who have monies in these particular institutions. Already, Eric Nipa has been appointed as the receiver. The receiver says that he will make sure his report is ready within the first 10 days so that we know the way forward and who's getting their money and who's not getting their money anytime soon. So, so he's that's receiver for all the banks? For all of the, the institutions. The the yes, yes, yes. So he's actually going to make sure his report is ready in the next 10 days. You know the Bank of Ghana released some FAQs about why it did this. It said it needed to make sure that it separated the uh, wheat from the chaff in this case so that we were, the, the chaff was not consistently affected the fortunes of the ones which were strong and healthy so that we're not preventing them from getting customers and continuing to operate because some of these signals it sends shocks to others that if you can't get your money from one you tell other people who are also willing or likely to go and redo their money from the healthy ones so that's why the bank of Canada had to draw the line what we are needed to know is that as Kofi Bento had demanded a list of the ones that are in good health so that people can still go to them and not target and not think that they are part of because today i know that once they are not in good health and it's a very long list but having to dis distinguish between the two might be problematic for anybody so we need to publish the ones that are in good health or they should publish themselves out there so that we know that they are not that actually encourages yes. them mm -hmm. and then gives give com gives confidence to the people who do business Brilliant. with these companies on the issue of job losses the bog says there'll be very little or no job losses how at many, all how many do they mean by very brilliant they did state it in their faqs but the director of operations of Dallas finance joe jackson is disputing that heavily mm -hmm. he says that at least even for the collapse ones they are cleaner who were running these offices mm. in the throes of the collapse, these people will eventually be rendered unemployed. Talk about the other people who will come with the 192 institutions in this case. It says we should rather plan for their future and make sure that we help them. And we learned from the other groupings that, I mean, even if your institution collapses anytime soon, getting the money for your future might not be as easy as we thought it would be, even if you are prioritized with money that the Bank of Ghana has already received. So this is a state and status of the microfinance, microcredit institutions in the country. Well, anyway, we are waiting to see if the customers can indeed go and get their funds and if, what the, the arrangements will be like, because this happened on Friday. And so today is the first working day since then. If you're a customer of any of these institutions, uh, you can send in a message. And if you have any questions at all, send them in on 0244-340-437. You can tweet at us at Joy997FM. Go on our Facebook page, Joy99.7FM. Today, we are having the owner of one of these closed microfinance institutions in the studio today. So we hear from his side what his story is. But let's move away from money. And this falling tree that has killed Five. Yes, 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 yes. So we are still in the we are still in the, the rainy season, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, the deaths are continuing unabated. Uh, torrential rain on Friday last week in the Second Takradi uh, Municipality Metropolis led to the death of five people, and Raymond told us during the, the, the headlines that this are five members of the same family, and while the rains were falling, a tree fall on fell on the roof of the house that house these five 
all five of them died. There's one person who survived. Now, the five who died are Antiama, who, who, who was 17, Emmanuel Anan, 7, Beatrice Anan, Ama, Dechi, 13, and a year old baby. There was Clement Ahen, 9, who survived. So he was rushed to the Sicado Government Hospital where uh, he was treated. He's the only member of the five. So there were six of them living in this room when the tree fall, fell on the house, and then five of them died. He's the only one who survived. But the rains did more than just kill these five. The, the substation in, and then you have to help me with this one, in Jurecia. Is, is that in, how the... In Jurecia. In Jurecia. The five, the, the, the substation there was totally flooded to the extent that the power distribution company had to put the power out. And this station supplies power to large parts of the Sekundita Kradi me metropolis. Mm -hmm. But they had to put it out under the circumstances. And the PDS issued a statement saying they needed to do this to save lives. So they put the power out. So many parts of the city um, had power cut to them. Roads were totally blocked as a result of this rain. It caused a lot of havoc in the area. But beyond that, we are still in the rainy season, right? And today mm -hmm. marks the four year, fourth year anniversary of the obviously the biggest flood and fire disaster in Ghana's history, June 3rd. Now, whilst time may have elapsed, the daily graphic said Bokwe story. As this is a story brought to us by Seth Bokpe and Salome Apia. They say many of the people who suffered in the flood and fire disaster are still nursing their wounds. And they zoomed in on one person, Kasim Suraj. They say after 1,460 days, Kasim Suraj has undergone eight surgeries. Mm. He's a 40-year-old truck truck driver at a 37 military hospital currently. He lives in Kasua, but he has a trek from Kasua to 37 military hospital to go through all of these surgeries. He's spent virtually his entire life savings. According to the story, the documents they have show that his medical bills alone amounted to 27,000 Ghana cities. Wow. Now, the government gave him 10,000 Ghana cities compensation on the first anniversary of the disaster, which was uh, June 2016. And he spent this money on transportation between Kasua and the 37 military hospital where he, and he has undergone... Transportation alone. Absolutely, where he has undergone. Because since he was discharged in 2016, he's been trekking virtually three times a week to the 37 military hospital to undergo these surgeries. And he spent this, this 10000 on the transportation. But it's more. He's expected to still undergo more surgeries. According to the documents, the medical records show that he suffered 60% of total surface burns with inhalation injuries. He's yet to undergo more surgeries as well so that um, he can have some of these corrections. Like he told the Daily Graphic that after some time, he decided to drive a taxi. And each time somebody sat in his taxi, he used to wear a cap to cover some of the, cover the bends, the, the seriousness of the bends. But when people sit in the car and they see the bends, they just get down. Mm. Which means now even a job has become a problem for him. And yet he still, he still has to undergo more surgeries, you know, according if to you doctors. Walk, I, I did that story I think around last year. If you walk down uh, to, you know, the Adabraka area where it's flooded, where, go, where the, the flood knock it, and you see the people whose livelihoods were destroyed, the, the hairdressers. I was with a hairdresser last year uh, who told me that, look at my shop. My shop has never been the same. It's a bit, um, it's a bit lowered. The shop, the shop itself is a bit lowered. Her equipment got destroyed. She's not been able to replace them. It was so, so, it was so disheartening to see that after about three years, they still couldn't put themselves together. That, that the tragedy is that not only have we not raised a memorial for these persons who perished in the flood and disaster, we have actually done absolutely nothing in terms of sustainably fixing the problem which caused them the pain. Which brings me to the reports that the Interministerial Committee puts together after the June 3 flood and fire disaster. Which, Raymond, do you have now? Yes, let me give you some recommendations you should be interested in. For the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development, they were supposed to, in conjunction with the Ministry of Water, Resources, Waste and Housing, construct retention bases in the upstream sections of the Odor River. Retention bases. And uh, this is to allow the runoff to be detained upstream. Now, there's also one you should be interested in. The Hydrological Survey Department under the Ministry should have been given statutory authority 
so that they can enforce the virtual development of drains in the country. Well, we are here to also get that happening. And this was in 2015. Yeah, 2015. One more thing that we could have done with just writing a letter is getting the EPA to compel companies to treat wastewater before they are released into the main drains. Because we found out that wastewater for some of these industrial companies were actually going straight into the drains, getting into the Kole Lagoon, and all of that, well compounded the problem. There is some for specific institutions like the people who are supposed to be at goal and also all the people related to this particular matter. The NPA also had some recommendations, some yes. very interesting recommendations in there. Uh, but we'll be bringing those details to you later. Raymond, tobacco is killing 75. Yes, this is according This is according to the FDA. The FDA is actually been putting out some data on this particular situation because we know that the first of last month was the tobacco day a day we set aside to make sure that people are not supposed to be killing themselves through this process now what they have put out there also suggests that rather than we considering tobacco just to be somebody at uh, somebody's problem is actually killing more Ghanaians than we knew imagine that the people in this office and we are less than 75 every single week that's the number that we lose to tobacco people have been smoking over a period of time now, there's been concerns about the nicotine-based compounds in tobacco that makes it addictive that groupings who struggle to later on uh, want to stop smoking cannot continue to do so because of the problems they have with that. Now, increasingly, there are also calls on the people of this country to consider a total ban, not ban in public smoking alone, a total ban, so that like countries like Singapore have done, we are considering the public health of the people more important than their right to smoke whichever thing they wanted to smoke in this particular case. Interesting. Interesting. So, so balancing the government's responsibility to protect yes. against the citizens' rights to, excuse my language, destroy his own lungs. Yeah. And, and, and you know the myth of shisha. Mm -hmm. uh, research has found that yeah. an hour of smoking shisha is equivalent to smoking a hundred cigarettes. Yeah. So shisha is not a softer or safer alternative. And the worst part is that the be. young girls, the young people of this country today feel more comfortable. Smoking shisha because and they, put they it think... Lively. Yes, yes is, the, think is a new is thing. Yes. Just it's in vogue. Yeah. Anyways, and uh, the motorway is losing its shine. Yes, yes, yes. So the Daily Graphic is bringing us a story that says the motorway is losing its shine. And this is a 19-kilometer motorway. But you now have illegal U-turns made on the motorway. You have virtually every part of the motorway has kiosks erected, erected by persons transacting business. In fact, they call them, what, kiosk estate. And... <laughs> That's how they call the kiosk estate. Really? And these, these kiosks, are, according to the Ghana Highways Authority, people who live in these areas, these are largely squatters. These people come and rob persons whose vehicles break down on the road. And apart from the nuisance that they create, the illegal U-turns that these persons are forced to create on the road, which they are not supposed to do, they also rob piece, people of their car batteries, they rob the person, they maim some of them, people whose vehicles break down. But even more importantly, according to the Ghana, Ghana Highways Authority, these are the people who cut copper wires that connect power to the street light. Mm -hmm. And Daniel, you went and counted the number of poles on the on the motorway that had no power they had no like these are supposed to be street lights but they had no light the ghana highways authority is saying it is because these squatters are allowed to stay there they go and cut the copper wires that anytime they replace them they go and cut them so consistently the motorway has no street light and motorists who use it complain about the potholes that are developing on the route and coupled with that you now have street lights completely absent that creates a dangerous situation for the people, mm -hmm. especially when you are being robbed whenever your vehicle breaks down. Why are people allowed to station properties where they have no right to be? Meanwhile, every district in this town has a planning officer. And yet, all of these areas which are within the jurisdictions of particular municipalities and district assemblies look on while these unauthorized structures come up. It is just like what Randy Abe said some months ago on News File, not his most recent one. He said in Ghana, development precedes planning. It precedes planning. And sometimes it's the same thing also in the microfinance sector. Because I learned recently that 
A lot of these microfinance companies will start as money lending agencies. They will get a license from the CID and then they would grow, they will grow before the Bank of Ghana steps in to begin to regulate. By that time, a lot of habits have been formed by these institutions. And it's the same way. Someone would go, cite his building by the, or cite his kiosk by the motorway, sits there for a number of years. When you go and try to evacuate the person, they say, give me compensation because I have been here for a while. Why are you asking them to go to? They are any. They are any a uh, uh, living here. Why? Why are you asking them? So to why go did to? we also watch them to be there? Absolutely. Because, the point, because that development they have... precedes planning. We no, develop. But, but Daniel, we, we are allowed to grow and but, fester but Daniel, before we think of planning. Daniel, the every space in this town is planned. It's just where the enforcement. Yeah. You know, when you go you to know any that? space, we know where the roads are. We know where are where supposed really? to be residential areas. We know. It's just that people are negligent and derelict in their duties. So they allow these unauthorized structures to spring up. Nobody goes to tell them, you have no right to be here. We don't do that. We don't have a culture of telling people you have no right to be here. I so we allow the people to settle. They become comfortable. Mm -hmm. Then they, they gain rights. Because they have been there for a long time, they gain rights. And depending on whether it's an election year, you don't want to lose votes. We want to let them stay a little bit longer. Absolutely. After that, maybe the next <laughs> will, will do this something. This morning, I'll refer again to the speech that Prof. Steve Nader gave last week at the National Development Forum I was at. You know that. We've had about 14 different development plans in this country yeah. since 1951. Mm -hmm. Out of those 14, only about three have been, have been implemented. And it, tell, tell, and it tells you that so we have had a historical pension for having nice plans and not implementing them. So we plan our cities like Malik is we plan our spaces very well. I was working at Urban Roads. I was working at every department. Um, and in both occasions, you will see a plan. This place is school field. And say, oh, let's make it into six plots. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Because, you, you see, because some people live on selling land in this country. In this country, the livelihood of some people some of them in traditional authority, some of them who are just from old families that were large and got the lands in the past. They'll say, oh, all I do is sell the land. So the more land I sell, the more I profit. So, oh, yeah, yeah, the six. Um, the surveyor will take one. We'll go and use one to settle the person in the office. I won't say which office. And then the fourth belongs to the landowner. This, this place is a school. No, let's use it. Let's sell it. This place is a children's park. No, let's sell it. So now there's land right by the motorway. We are selling them and we are making them to estate. And everybody is watching. We are all sitting there. In any case, uh, we have to move on and do the online news review. It's brought to you by Zenith Bank in your best interest and Goyle Good Energy. Now make your day productive by relying on quality fuel from Goyle, your three-time CIMG Petroleum Company of the Year. Goyle Super XP and Diesel XP are additivated to enhance strong engine performance and prolong the lifespan of your vehicle. Above all, you are guaranteed extra quality with a fuel analyzer from a mobile laboratory van. Get your money's worth every day by buying fuel and lubricants from any of Goyle's over 360 service stations nationwide and experience good energy. Buy Goyle, go Ghana. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. Now go light with Zenith Bank and have dinner on us at the Plush African Regent Hotel. To enjoy this offer, simply use any MasterCard at all to make a minimum purchase of 500 Ghana CDs on a Zenith Bank POS at the African Regent Hotel and be rewarded with free dinner or a discount of 100 Ghana CDs on other meal options. Visit the African Regent Hotel today. Use any MasterCard on a Zenith Bank POS and have dinner on us. Go light with Zenith Bank. Pay light. Zenith Bank in your best interest. Eric Nipa, the receiver, is going to finish his assessment of the light, the institutions with their licenses revoked in 10 days. Raymond brought us that earlier. In the, <coughs> yes, in the Upper West Region, the Bukinabe has been caught to the loaded gun at a crowded Catholic church. AdamOnline.com, fighting corruption in Ghana is like fighting demons. Guys, you want to hear this? Uh, fighting corruption is, is, is something that ha you have to always uh, keep doing because when you are fighting corruption, as I say, you are fighting demons and principalities. <laughs> So, so you, you always have to be on top of, of it because they come in different shapes uh, and, 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 and reinvent themselves. We bind every spirit of corruption in this country, especially when investigations get to the Attorney General's office yes. and the documents are missing. And some spirits from certain... Okay. It's a demonic entry. Yeah. Do you understand? 
So today we'll be doing an exorcism on the Super Morning Show. Manasseh Azuria Warning will be joining us. And we'll be finding out exactly what happened to these documents that ended up at the Attorney General's office. If and contracts have also disappeared at local government ministry. We are binding in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we'll be right back.